Hey everybody, freshly shaved, not freshly shaved, freshly showered Eric here. And um, I gotta put a buckle guy order away that I just placed, but today I'm starting my New Year's resolution, which is that of brevity, showing you a project, not talking for 30 minutes about random stuff. And we are going to work on, now that you've bought a little wet mold, and now that everyone in your life has 15 little trays, what do you do with the wet mold? You know what I mean? So what I'm working on is a little shaving kit for my dad, and it's pretty simple. You open it up, all your stuff's there. But this magic lies in the seam because instead of using a double seam, which a lot of people have watched this, a lot of people make this bag, and it's a great design, but you have one seam that comes in here, and then you have another seam that stitches to the outside. When you use a wet mold, it's the easiest way to show you. You just pop the wet mold in, sew it all around. And as you can see on this side, you get the same look with one less stitch line, and it looks really cool. Once wet mold is dry, we're gonna pull it out of the mold. We're gonna have to make a jig. Now, I like to use, just shims you buy at the hardware store for this, and a pen, because the pen gives you a little extra height. And you want the pen to be able to reach where you want on the shim or on the wet mold. So I kind of just move this back and forth because naturally, A, it's long enough so it supports the pen, but the further you move it out, the higher and lower it gets. So I'm good right there. We're gonna sand a lot. You wanna leave a little extra. Then I'm just gonna take painter's tape. This is like Stone Age technology here. I'm sure there are better ways to do this. It's just how I do it. And we're gonna tape the pen to the shim, like that. And then probably around so it doesn't wiggle the other way as well. And what you can also do that makes your life a lot easier is before we do this, just take the excess, if you can, off of your wet mold. The first way is you can put your wet mold back on to, well, you can put your leather back on your wet mold and do a light surface cut, but not cut all the way through. Now, this is very easy because then you have a line to follow. The only thing is, do you see how I'm keeping my thumb? I'm cutting like this. So if my knife slips, I'm not gonna hit myself. It's gonna go into my body like this. There's no way that the blade's gonna get me. It's kind of like spoon carving. And if you don't know, they have crazy techniques in spoon carving to make sure that you are not gonna cut yourself. Even though it looks like you can put a spoon carving knife directly into like your esophagus sometimes. So this is one way to do it. The other way is to just freaking go for it. Um, hold it, cut it, use a Japanese knife, whatever you're comfortable with. For me, I just do it this way because I know I'm not cutting into the into the wood. And then once I hit it, which should be right there, right? We can test to see on the inside if I've made it through and I haven't. So now that I have sort of a highway to run my blade on, I'm gonna stick it directly through. And you can see, you don't wanna just stab it you wanna kinda of like run with it, and then it'll just kinda of pop in. And if you're using a sharp blade, it'll just follow that mark that you already made. Now this cut, it is very important to know, we are sanding the ever-living hell out of this cut. So if it's a little scraggly, if it's a little uneven, don't even worry about it. Just get it cut, and get it cut safely. And sometimes you'll hit a harder part, that's just part of the hide or how the wet mold is. Remember, they made leather armor by boiling leather. So wet molded leather is just a little bit more difficult to work with, but look at that. So that makes its own nice little tray, but that's not what we're here for. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that our top fits in our side. Look at that. This side is stitched, this side is ready to be stitched, and it's like a neat and tidy, it adds a lot of strength here. I would suggest your seam 
your opening be at least two inches from your seam or else it feels kind of floppy and too far back. Um, but now our goal, this is actually a really good cut. Um, our goal is we want a little bit of overhang on this seam so that we can, t once we have it glued in, we can take our Japanese skiving knife nice and sharp and just skim the edges of this and cut this off. Uh, weight loss update. Sorry, I was looking at the camera. Weight loss update. This jacket didn't fit last year. We're doing good. I'm down three belt notches on a belt that I am not wearing, so it's not stretching out. I have like a belt that I made that I can gauge my weight loss by how many notches I've lost, but it's not stretching out. So I know it's not stretching out. And I did that because I had like eating disorder issues when I was younger. I don't use scales, but we're doing good. And I got to wear snazzy sh stuff like this. Almost said a bad word. This whole thing buttons up. So I got myself some new t-shirts. They're clean. I'm not covered in paint. Um, yeah, things are good. I'm, d I'm doing good. Eating salads. Not all salads, but a lot of salads. All right, so in true winter fashion, um, it has gotten completely dark. And I'm going to show you how to put the top onto a little circle like we did on this side. Basically, all you're going to do is start. And you're going to have to kind of, I like using the Toluene Free Barge on this because it is a little more, like once it sticks, it's not like totally permanent. But you can't be afraid to muscle it around at the same time. And now remember again, it's up to you as to like if you want to leave it like that and then trim it all off, go for it. I want kind of a deep dish to it. So I'm going to pull and push my way until I have the right fitting. And don't be afraid to unstick and stick. Remember, this glue is just a third hand. We're going to sew this whole thing up. So when you're trimming, you want to be really careful. Keep your fingers out of the way. Take your Japanese knife or whatever knife you feel comfortable with. I personally feel comfortable with this knife because you can lay it flat and you can kind of use the exterior portion here. That's the portion we want to follow. So that's the portion that I'm going to use. And the nice thing about this design is if it's not totally even, it doesn't matter. No one's going to notice except for you. And I've learned in leather work that if no one notices but you, that's okay. So you can see our little hump here is about to be totally gone. I piece 250 grit sandpaper on a flat surface. And I'm going to make circular motions, making sure that I'm putting even pressure on everything. That way, even if some of the outside is uneven, eventually we're going to hit equilibrium and everything is going to be even. Once you're sanded down here, you might notice that things are a little uneven. Another good time to take a bone folder. Wet molded leather dries, but it always is a little more pliable than regular leather. So I like to really kind of use a bone folder, not aggressively, but make sure I really get a nice flat edge. And especially in a cylinder, it's really easy to just kind of roll it along, nice and easy. Per usual, I'm using a roughly 3.5 millimeter stitch line. And we're just gonna bop this guy in here. Just rotate it, get your stitch line where you can see it. And if you have a little, if you have some nooks and crannies, just ignore them. We're gonna eventually when you go to skive this, not skive this, bevel it, you're not even going to notice it. The last tip I'm going to give you before the video is over, because I feel like this is a good stopping point, is punching the holes. I'm going to use my 5mm stitching chisels. What I would not suggest is doing, you don't have to use like a single tooth, because realistically if we laid this all out, it's just a flat line. But I wouldn't go with the let the eight tooth either. 
what we want to do is I'm going to use my five tooth and I'm going to make sure that I'm holding it straight up and down. It's only two pieces of leather. It's just the form factor is a little weird. So I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure that all my holes, all of my tines are lined up where I want my holes. And this is a good example here of why we put the curve in the stitching chisel so that I can hold on to this. But when I hammer, because I'm holding on to the highest part, it protects my fingers. Now I did the other side because I'm impatient with the bigger stitching chisels, with the bigger nine tooth, to see if it could be done. And it looks fine. I was able to save it, but I will show you both sides. Okay, so if we look at this side, you can see how we have a nice straight stitching line right there, ready to be stitched. If you look at this side, it's okay looking. Like from the inside, it looks great, right? But on the outside, could have done better, you know? That's why it's for dad. I wouldn't sell this piece, but it's all in the learning process. So once I'm done stitching everything up, what I'm gonna do, do is use this great half inch gap that I have in here. You can see the overlap right there. See how I skive that down? So I have a half inch there and I'm gonna set three, four rivets. There's gonna be, we're already stitched together so it's not coming apart. Then I'm gonna set two rivets with a handle. And that, my friends, is how you can take a wet mold that you might not be using much and utilize it more because these are tools. And if they sit in the shop, don't get stressed out about it, but it's nice to be able to use tools that you might not have a need to make 10 or 15 trays, but you could do a holiday market or a get like gifts for your family where you make them all travel bags and you're using a tool that's just sitting in your shop that you never thought to use. So that is how you use a wet mold to replace what we call a double seam. Now, does it look the exact same? No, but does it serve the same exact function with one less stitch line? And to be honest, it's a lot easier to put together? Absolutely. So I'm gonna stop there. In the new year, I hope to bring you very specific content. I know I tend to ramble on. Now that I show my face, it's you've opened Pandora's box. I'm a chatty Cathy. Um, but I've given you all the tools that you need to design your own bag, use the what molds that you have, and come up with something cool like this. Remember, you're cutting a hole in the leather, so you wanna cut a flat piece. You wanna measure around the circle. Depending on how thick the leather you're using, it's gonna be different measurements. I can't put out a pattern for this. And then you're gonna get the inset, pick your inset, sand down on a flat piece of paper, of sandpaper on your workbench, and then sew away and add an attachment. And the nice thing is you can access on this bag. I like that this is a nice beginner bag because if you forget to put a rivet in or if you forget to put a closure, everything is accessible with this access hole. You can, I could forget any part of this bag and I could put it on through this massive access hole. If I wanted to put bag feet on this, I could put them on. So, you know, it's a good project if you're just getting into it. It's also a good project if you're offering a customizable uh, situation where people are like, I want bag feet, I want a handle, I want loops to put a little shoulder strap. You could make this longer and make it a clutch. You could use the square one and make it a clutch. I think they have teardrops coming out. That's gonna be a really cool bag that I definitely already have designed. Not sure I'm supposed to tell you that the teardrop is coming out, but it's just the shape of a water drop. It's very cool. I think the first thing I thought was that'll be a cool bag, size of a bag. Um, that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. It's nice to be back into leatherwork, and I'll see you in the next one.